Have you ever wondered why some theological systems are based solely on Paul's epistles without considering the Synoptic Gospels or the Hebrew Bible? This question forms the crux of a compelling argument. Such a narrow focus on Paul's letters can be misleading. An interesting point they raise is about Paul's claim of being chosen by Jesus, which is primarily based on signs and wonders. Now, this is a curious case because Jesus himself cautioned against signs and wonders as being potential indicators of false prophets. This raises a poignant question. Could Paul's claim be more complex than it initially appears? It's a thought-provoking perspective that nudges us to dive deeper into the intricacies of biblical texts and their interpretations. Could it be possible that Paul's teachings were not in alignment with the teachings of Jesus? Did you know there's a prophecy in Genesis about a ravening wolf from the tribe of Benjamin? This prophecy, according to the author, could be a sharp arrow pointing towards none other than Paul. A member of the tribe of Benjamin himself, Paul's actions and teachings raise some intriguing questions. Unlike prophets of old who were known for their prophetic accuracy, Paul, it appears, never made a valid prophecy. He strayed from the traditional path and proclaimed that the law given by Moses was nullified. This was a radical shift, a departure from the teachings of the Hebrew Bible and the Synoptic Gospels as spoken by Jesus. The prophecy of the ravening wolf could be a metaphorical warning about a figure who would bring about a significant change, a figure who would challenge established norms and beliefs. In light of this, some suggest that Paul fits the description of the ravening wolf. Could Paul be the false apostle mentioned in the book of Revelation? A thought-provoking question indeed, one that continues to spark lively debate among theology enthusiasts, and we must test Paul's epistles. Have you pondered on the verse 2 John 9? This verse urges us to remain steadfast in the teachings of Christ, stating, Anyone who runs ahead and does not continue in the teaching of Christ does not have God. Whoever continues in the teaching has both the Father and the Son. This verse resonates in the context of the arguments presented against Paul's teachings. If Paul's epistles deviate from the teachings of Jesus, as some suggest, then according to this verse, those who follow such teachings may not be in communion with God. This isn't to condemn Paul or his followers outright, but to emphasize the importance of scrutinizing all teachings and holding them up against the light of Christ's words. It serves as a reminder that in our quest for understanding and connection with the divine, we must always anchor ourselves in the teachings of Jesus. It is through his teachings that we understand the heart of the Father and the essence of the Son. Let this verse serve as a reminder to always align our beliefs with the teachings of Jesus as it is through him that we find the Father. The Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these.